Hey there, guys. It's like March 30th, I think, something like that. I'm in town here today. Anyways, I thought I would just kind of continue on from the last video about a bunch of the planning that we were working on. This is a very busy time for me, and it's kind of monotonous for you guys. You know, you're not too into it, but I thought I would just kind of, you know, fill you in a little bit. Anyways, it's just what I do. So uh, right now we're dealing with insurance. I've in the previous video I was talking about the chemicals and the, you know pre-planning the, the crop rotations and trying to figure out what you're gonna seed and I'll add a little bit to that in this video as well but right now we're just gonna talk about insurance so what is insurance um, obviously you guys know what insurance is but what is crop insurance so there's crop insurance that we can take I know there's been lots of questions with uh, regarding that in the past so hopefully we can kind of clear a little bit of this up so there's different insurance that uh, farmers can take and the first one and probably the most common most popular would probably be Saskatchewan crop insurance so Saskatchewan crop insurance is a provincially subsidized um, uh, insurance program I do believe and they will as well not be because I can get private insurance for about the same price and almost better coverage but anyway that being said it is what it is so Sask insurance how they insure you as a farmer is first of all you can either choose to take insurance or you don't have to take insurance. If your house is paid for, you don't have to insure your house. You don't have to insure a lot of things. Obviously vehicles you do, but not necessarily by not insuring things is a very smart move. But anyway, that being said, it's totally your call if you would like to buy some insurance. So we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. So first off, Sask Insurance, they guarantee you um, uh, bushels. So they're insuring bushels, okay? Like what you would grow. Now like an insurance company they're going off of your average and uh, your yield information so let's just say for example round numbers Mike was guaranteed Mike Mike's five-year or ten-year average is 40 bushel on his Durham okay that's 40 bushel so then crop insurance based off my history that's how it works it's not based off my neighbors and that's not based off of yours it's not based off an area average it's based off of your history with them well Mike what if you never had any history with them and you're just new to the program then they're gonna base it off an area and average and believe me it's not gonna be in your favor um, but anyways based off of your coverage and your history your yield information of what you grow um, especially if you've been in the program because if you have good years or bad years you're always got to submit to an insurance company so that way they can see and base your history off of it okay so they're gonna they're saying that my history shows 40 bushel on Durham. Saskatchewan Crop Insurance is going to set a, a price on all their commodities that they insure, like your chickpeas, your mustards, your canolas, the whole thing. Whatever you grow, pretty much you can just about insure it. They're going to set those prices in like January or February or something like that. So whatever the whatever the 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 market prices are they're gonna set it and then they might try and target you know is the price gonna go down you know insurance companies aren't dumb insurance companies always win at the end of the day but anyway that's what they're going to do so let's just say so for round number they're gonna choose 10 bucks a bushel all right that ten dollars a bushel will not change that is going to be for the whole insurance covered year so we now know that Mike is going to be uh, insured for off his history for 40 bushels that's 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 not what he's gonna be insured for don't don't get me wrong, but that's Mike's average 40 bushel. So now I can choose different levels of insurance. The highest I can go is 80%. That's the highest. The lowest I can go is 50%. So you got 50, 60, 70, 80. All right. Now the price over here is not going to change. It's still 10 bucks, but the best insurance that I can buy is 80% of my 40 bushel average or 70% of my 40 bushel average or 60 and so on and so forth. And then the premium is going to be different, obviously. It's gonna be very expensive to insure for the 80% of my 40 bushel average. And it's gonna be the cheapest to insure for the 50% of my 40 bushel average. So 50% of a 40 bushel average is what? My math is correctly, that's correct. That's 20 bushel. So crop insurance is gonna say, okay, for this premium, so much per acre, that's where your premium goes, so much per acre, for, so for t so much per acre, we will guarantee you 20 bushels per acre at $10. So we're gonna guarantee you $200 an acre for X premium. That premium is gonna vary and that coverage is gonna vary to every single farm because it goes off your own individual. So obviously if you're not growing very good crops, your average is coming down, 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 very stinking fast and your premium's going up, 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 very, very, very fast right so uh, 
You can't farm for insurance. It's impossible to do. Insurance companies always win and no farmer ever would ever want to try and do that. You all, farmers always want to try and grow the best crop that they absolutely can. Okay, so that's SASC insurance. Let's get them out of the way. We're not going to talk about them anymore. Then there's private insurance that is not subsidized. It's literally just private insurance. You can choose to buy that insurance if you choose, if you should so want to. But the one that I'm most familiar with, we'll talk about, uh, is more revenue based insurance, okay? So they're gonna dig into your financials. You send everything to the accountants. You know, they're gonna go back five years. They're gonna figure out, okay, your average is about this much per acre. So we're gonna take, oh, Ashton's coming here. So one sec, one sec. Sorry about that. I just had to help Ashton pack up the vehicle here. We're actually on our way to Regina. We got to take the little man, Chapel, for some more allergy testing. He almost died on us there uh, last fall, so we keep getting him tested for different things. He's quite allergic to tree nuts, uh, cats. We think he's allergic to some sort of different types of dust and stuff because he'll just start breaking out in hives all over his face, and we got to carry epis with us and stuff so on. So anyways, we're working our way through that. Now, what was I talking about? Um, revenue based insurance so yeah so you just they're gonna go through your history and uh, basically okay this is what your average is and they're gonna guarantee you like a certain percentage of that like insurance companies typically do for this X amount of premium now you can actually run both those insurance you could still have a bushel based insurance over here and a revenue based insurance over here and they won't uh, contradict each other so uh, you can run both if you would like to and then there's also hail insurance let's talk about hail insurance um, hail insurance is different yet again because you got crop insurance that guarantees you bushels. You got uh, more revenue based insurance that's just going to guarantee you revenue. And then you got uh, uh, hail insurance, which you get to choose how much dollars per acre you want to put on. So, for example, you know, if you had a 20 bushel crop or a 40 bushel crop, yeah, if you had a 40 bushel crop at 10 bucks, now, no insurance company is going to guarantee you for your max, but if you did, that's $400 an acre. So if you had a good crop, you should be able to make $400 an acre, right? Right. You could technically put on $1,000 an acre of hail insurance if you wanted to roll it all on red. So and you, that's literally like going to Vegas. You could like literally throw it all on red and hope for a hailstorm. But if you don't get a hailstorm, you're going to be in the red because that premium is going to be massive out of this world. Uh, but if there's lots of hail floating around, uh, you can put anywhere from 50 bucks of of hail insurance on. Uh, I have put up $600 in it worth of hail insurance on and uh, then you're typically looking for hail at that point uh, if you're gonna put that much on. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're literally doing what uh, you're totally allowed to do. And uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure you can even put hail insurance on somebody else's field if you really thought that they were in a hail path. Uh, it might get awkward, you know, when the adjuster has to come out and it's not your land. So I w probably wouldn't recommend doing that. But <laughs> you're literally just you're literally just gambling at that time. So, uh, but that being said, anywhere between fifty to three hundred dollars an acre, it would be pretty normal, um, depending on what area you're in, area you're in. And then also you want to figure out how much you're growing. Like if you had a forty bushel canola crop growing out there. And if you thought you could get 20 bucks for it, now canola is just tanked all the way down to like 15 bucks. Uh, but at the time, there was some 20s floating around. So if you could get 20, uh, well, that's, what's that, $800 an acre. So if you have an $800 an acre crop out there, of course, it might have taken you $300 or $400 an acre to grow that crop. And then you're not counting all your input, or all, you're at, that is your inputs, but you're not counting what it actually turns, you know, for your labor, uh, your equipment costs, your infrastructure costs, or maybe not even your cash rent or land payment costs are in that yet. So at the end of the day, the profit margins are quite small. Uh, but anyways, that being said, you can still insure to the moon and back for hail insurance. Only for hail insurance. All the other insurance, revenue, bushels, that's off you. That's not off your neighbor. So if you've been growing a lot of good crops lately and you've been making tons of money, hands over fist, hand over fist, you're making tons of money, then you're going to be insured for a pretty good amount of money. If it's been the opposite, you have been not growing very good crops. Uh, for us down south, we've been not growing very good crops. 
our coverage is plummeting, our premiums are skyrocketing, and that is just how the world works. So then I guess at that point, you need to decide, is it even worth it now for me to carry that insurance? At the end of the day, it's costing me this much for this little. Insurance companies always win, you guys. Insurance companies always win. But that being said, I'm going to let you go. I think i got to hit the road here. Uh, Ashton's already taken off. Uh, we do have an appointment we got to get to. Um, uh, I'm sure you guys have lots of questions like, Mike, can you self-insure? Yes, you can self-insure. I think I maybe covered that one already. If, I'm, if not, I will go over it again. Um, you could take $50 an acre or... If you could, if you could take a hundred dollars an acre, no, no one's taking a hundred dollars an acre, but you could take a small amount of acre, small dollars per acre and throw it into a separate little bank account. That's your insurance pot, right? You know, you've had three good years. You got 150 bucks in there. If you took 50 or okay, you had five good years. Maybe you got 200 bucks in there or something. I, you know, I don't know. I'm just picking up numbers, right? But the truth is, is if you have a catastrophic failure, especially what we've had in the past, last two years down in the South Farm, you will lose more money in those one or two years than you could probably make in seven good years. So just because you can afford to self-insure doesn't necessarily mean it's smart to self-insure. I know a lot of people who do self-insure. I do. Uh, and it's nothing against them at all. What they're doing is working. Every farm, you have to remember, every farm is doing what's best for them. And you're not going to find two farms that do it the same. That just doesn't, it's not a thing. So you're going to, you're going to have the self insurers over here. That's awesome. You're going to have the guys that are running crop insurance over here. That's awesome. You're going to, the guys are going to have running crop insurance plus revenue insurance, or you're going to have guys that are just running revenue insurance and no crop insurance. And then you're going to have guys that just aren't, aren't insuring at all and literally rolling on red with no backup plan. There's all kinds out there and there is no wrong way. So it's just for myself, I like to think that I like to have a little bit of insurance for sure because I have to think about what can I afford to lose and what can I not afford to lose at the end of the day. So, But I'm sure there'll still be more questions. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, yeah, so those deadlines are here and uh, we are making plans and this is a very busy time of the season as I've already said so you guys have yourself a good one and hopefully I answered a few questions probably not probably confused you but anyway it is what it is so adios have yourself a good one Mike I have a question does your federal or provincial government bail you out if you get into financial issues that would be awesome. I'm pretty sure only Bombardier over there in Quebec keeps getting bailed out. <laughs> and the banks. And the banks get bailed out. Uh, but anyways, um, no. You get yourself into financial problems. You are on your own. You're having an auction sale. Somebody else is running your equipment. And somebody else will be farming your land. There is no bailouts. We are not subsidized uh, up here. Other than some insurance. The Saskatchewan crop insurance. And uh, some dyed diesel. Uh, we get dyed diesel a little bit cheaper for farm use. Um, but no, we are not guaranteed anything. We are not guaranteed a crap. In fact, and for, unfortunately, our federal government doesn't even know where his food comes from. He honestly believes it comes from Costco. Costco makes it in their warehouse and then puts it on the shelf. That's truly what he believes. Unfortunately, I am not making this crap up. <laughs> Well, Mike, what would be the benefit of taking one insurance versus the other insurance, say revenue-based insurance versus bushel-based insurance, or both? It's a really good question. Yeah, I'm in a different vehicle already, yeah? I told you I'm in a vagina. Um, it's a really good question. Well, for example, let's just say you have a super awesome crop, okay? Like, you insured, but you're gonna pay a big premium and you're not gonna get anything in return, and that's just how, that's just life. You are literally just buying insurance so that way you can insure for what you cannot afford to lose. So you are got a beautiful bumper crop out there. You're getting 70 bushel wheat, 50 or 60 bushel canola, you know, 140 bushel oats. You got a beautiful crop. And then you, you grew lentils and you should be in that 30 bushel lentil mark, but you had a freak hailstorm come over and it hailed out all your lentils. Okay, let's just use that for an example. And you didn't put any hail insurance on. You you know, you didn't really want to throw it all on red. 
Um, so if you if you insured for just revenue, well, you're not going to get anything, right? And the reason why is because your 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 wheat and your canola and your oats they produced so well uh, that your bottom for your insurance you're way up here. You're happy. You don't have to claim any insurance, but you just lost all your red lentils and you didn't put any hail insurance on. Now, if you would have just taken um, crop insurance, then you're also still not going to claim on any of your wheat or any of your canola or any of your oats, and that's a good thing, but you would claim on your red lentils because you got them annihilated by hail. And say you took 80 or 80% 80 and I don't know what your yield would be, but let's just say you were guaranteed a 20 bushel crop. Okay, you're hoping for a 40, you were guaranteed a 20, that's the insurance you took. So that means even though you had a bumper crop of wheat, a bumper crop of canola, a bumper crop of oats, and you would have had a bumper crop of red lentils, but they got annihilated. So crop insurance is then going to pay you out for 20 bushel uh, an acre at whatever price they would have already chosen back in the winter, okay? So now, taking both of those, you get to, you're guaranteeing yourself some revenue, but you're also guaranteeing yourself some bushels, so you can use the crop insurance, Saskatchewan crop insurance, as your hail insurance, in case you get one hailed out. So you could do that as well. So there is different ways that you can look at it. There is pros and cons to taking one over the other, pros and cons to taking them both. But at the end of the day, you can only, a farm can only afford to spend so much on insurance. Because you gotta remember, it's not just hail insurance. It's not just crop insurance. It's not just revenue insurance. You also have to pay for liability insurance on your farm. You also have to pay for equipment insurance on your farm. You also have to pay for infrastructure, like, building insurance on your farm. So your insurance premiums and your the amount of money that I spend on insurance is stupid, all right? Your vehicles are insured, your semis are insured, there's liability insurance, there's so much stinking insurance. You can only pay so much insurance, okay? So at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make some cuts, but there's pros and cons to taking one over the other. Um, so hopefully that answers some of your questions. Well, Mike, how come you have to know now? Well, that's you have to know now because the insurance company doesn't want you to go into the year and be like, hmm, you know, it's looking like it's gonna be a good year, I'm not gonna spend any money on insurance. And then they don't get any money. Uh, but at the, at the same time, they don't want you going into the year and be like, hmm, I'm seeing a big drought coming. Load her up, boys, load her up with insurance. It doesn't work that way. You have to anticipate, you gotta get your crystal ball and nobody has it while there's snow on the ground and decide what kind of insurance you're gonna get or what kind of crop it's gonna be. Ashton and Chapel are back, so I'll catch you guys on the flipper. Adios, amigos.